What's up guys, it's Lawrence. Thanks for stopping by my channel. If you like what you see, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks. Observing obscure observances, looking at the calendar for May the 13th. Here we have cough drop day. And it says cough drops are small, okay, cough drops are small tablets, usually medicated, that slowly dissolve in the mouth to suppress or stop coughs temporarily, as well as to soothe sore tissues in the throat. Some are designed to combat other symptoms of the common cold or influenza as well. They are sometimes known as throat lozenges because they were originally shaped like lozenges or diamonds. Yeah. Okay. They've also been called troches, cachous, and cough sweets. Today we celebrate them for all they do to help us while we are sick. <clears throat> Ingredients in cough drops include both expectorants and cough suppressants. Cough drops also have many of the same ingredients that hard candies have, hmm, such as sugar and corn syrup, as well as other additives such as vitamins. Some common ingredients include benzocaine, I'm not sure what that is, eucalyptus oil, peppermint oil, menthol, spearmint, honey, dextromethorphan, vitamin C, zinc, echinacea, and camphor. Non-menthol cough drops usually have an oral demulcent. That's what oral demulcent is. Such as pectin or zinc gluconic glycin. The ingredients are mixed together, cooked, and cooled in a similar process to how hard candy is made. I did not know that. And of course, since it is cough drop day, I kind of felt as if I had to have this in my arsenal. <laughs> Ricola! Well, this commercial was back in the 90s with the guy with the horn. <laughs> the horn was bigger than he was. Ricola! <laughs> From Switzerland. For soothing, for soothing relief, try Ricola. <laughs> All right. Ah, oh, darn it. <clears throat> Hold on, gotta go back up. <clears throat> Okay, donate a day's wages to Charity Day. Observe the second Wednesday in May. No information on that. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Frog Jumping Day. That's a new one. Observed annually on May 13th. Huh. I got a friend who's freaked out by frogs. I don't know why, but she just is. But, uh... Let's see what this is here. Frog Jumping Day. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Frog Jumping Day is dedicated to frogs that jump, to jumping like a frog, to frog jumping contests, and Mark Twain's short story, The Celebrated Jumping Frog of Calaca County, Calaska, Calaveras County, which appears to be the inspiration for the day. The short story was originally published as Jim Smiley and his Jumping Frog and appeared in the New York Saturday Press on November 18, 1865. It was Twain's first important work. It went on to appear in more magazines and newspapers and brought him to national attention. It was published as the celebrated Jumping Frog of Calaveras County in the Californian on December 16, 1865. It is under this title that it is most frequently appears as today. It is also going by the name of the notorious jumping frog of Calaveras County. The story appeared in Twain's first book, The Celebrated Jumping Frog of Calaveras County, and other sketches, a compilation of 27 short stories that had previously appeared in newspapers and magazines that was published in 1867. Oh, so it's like a compilation, like an anthology, kind of. So that's about it. That doesn't really tell you all that much else. I mean, I mean... I mean, it's not even Mark Twain's birthday. Mark Twain's birthday is November 30th. 1835. All right. International Hummus Day. Hmm. Observed annually on May 13th. No information, but I think my nephew likes hummus. International Receptionists. Uh, International Receptionist Day. Also known as National Receptionist Day. Uh, let's see. Observed the second Wednesday in May. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Okay, let's see. Go here. All right, where is it at? All right. Where is it? Okay. 
A receptionist is often the first person a client or customer will meet when they arrive at a company, and they are the ones who have the task of making a positive first impression on whoever walks through the doors. Taking place on the second Wednesday in May, the purpose of International Receptionist Day is to foster a recognition of the importance of a receptionist's role, promote pride and professionalism amongst receptionists for the important role they play within an organization. Give receptionists an opportunity to share stories and link up with other colleagues around the world and give employers an opportunity to shine a light on their receptionists and celebrate their achievements across their businesses. The date started out as Receptionist Day, being created by Jennifer Alexander of the National Receptionist Association. Okay, so there's another NRA. <clears throat> to recognize the special role that receptionists uh, let's see, the receptionist playing to distinguish their skills from the admin or secretary. It was first observed in 1991, exclusively in the United States. In 2012, uh, let's see, in 2012, Rapport, a provider of reception service in the United Kingdom, brought the holiday to that country. It became International Receptionist Day. In 2016, after the United States, the United Kingdom, and Australia joined together to mark the day, Canada, Ireland, and other European countries have since joined in observation of the day. So there you go. <clears throat> All right, what else is on this list here? Okay. Uh, wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> go back up a little bit. Yeah. Frog jumping did that. Hummus, it's a receptionist. There we go, National Apple, National Apple Pie Day, observed annually on November, no, I'm sorry, today, May 13th and December 3rd. Ah, so there we go. So apple pie, is, apple pie is so American, folks, it has two holidays. Can you believe that? Okay. Okay, here we go. Ah, <clears throat> oh, sheesh. Come on. All right, where were we on this thing? All right, scrolling down, scrolling down. There's a lot of scrolling here, folks. Oh, dang it. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> Apple pie is seen as being very American. Just how American? Well, there is not one but two national... national wait, wait, wait. Apple pie is seen as being very American. Just how American? Well, there is not one but two national... Apple Pie Days in the year, and is it almost a, and it's almost a certainty you've heard the phrase as American as apple pie. How ironic it is then that apple pies didn't even originate in the United States, nor did apples. Well, what? Well, okay. Wow. Apples came from Asia, and their seeds and cuttings were oh, wait. Apples came from Asia, and their seeds and cuttings were brought to the Americas by Europeans during colonial times. Prior to this, only crab apples were grown in the Americas. The first apples brought to the Western Hemisphere were tarred and were used to make cider. It wasn't until around 1800 when apples better suited for pies with a higher. Uh, uh, wait, hang on a second. The first apples brought to the Western Hemisphere were tart and were used for making cider. It wasn't until around 1800 when apples better suited for pies with a higher acidity and crispness, crispness began being grown in the United States. <clears throat> it was also around this time that Johnny Appleseed began traveling the country and helping solidify the association of the apple with America. So that's how it happened. The earliest rec uh, see the earliest rec the earliest record of the phrase American as apple pie dates to nineteen twenty four. Okay. Nineteen twenty four when it appeared in an advertisement in the Gettysburg in the, sorry, in the Gettysburg Times. The association between apple pie and America became inextricable by World War II when American soldiers would tell journalists they were fighting for mom and apple pie. This led to the phrase as American as mom and apple pie. It became a prevalent saying, saying in the United States during the post-war years. The earliest known apple pie recipe was printed by Geoffrey Chaucer in England in 1381. It included apples, spices, raisins, figs, pears, and saffron. Saffronin? Saffron, s saffron in a pasty crust, saffron in a pasty crust. A Dutch apple pie, uh, let's see, a Dutch apple pie recipe was found that dates to 1514. 
Dutch apple pies usually have a lattice pastry top. French, German, and Italian apple pies all appeared in recipe books before American colonies had been settled. Many early apple pie recipes didn't include sugar, and some early pies were made in inedible containers called coffins. Today, apple pie usually has a bottom and top crust. It can be served hot or cold. It can be topped with ice cream, custard, and whipped cream. So for anybody out there who likes apple pie, you know, you can go to McDonald's, get an apple pie. <clears throat> That's how that phrase came to be. So it didn't originate here. So apples and apple pie, they didn't originate here, but they got popular over here. And I guess it's stuck. All right. National Fruit Cocktail Day, observed annually on May 13th. No information. National Leprechaun Day. Wouldn't it make sense to have that on, on uh, March 17th? For St. Patrick's Day? For St. Patty's Day? By the way, just a quick little aside. I got to think that the, the Leprechaun series of movies with the little guy terrorizing everyone, Wardrick Davis, yeah, that's a very silly franchise if there ever was one. I mean, may maybe it was intended to be a mockery of horror movies. I don't know. National Numeracy Day. That's in the UK. Uh, that's in the UK. Observed Wednesday in the second... Uh, 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 observed annually uh, the second Wednesday in May. No information. Darn. Uh, excuse me. What about National Root Canal Appreciation Day? Observed the second Wednesday in May. Let me ask you, who truly appreciates a root canal? I don't know anybody who really does. I mean, everyone dreads them. I've never had one. They don't sound like fun. National Third Shift Workers Day, also known as National Night Shift Workers Day. Oh, I didn't know that. There's a really cool track from Afro Man about Night Shift. Top Gun Day, observed annually on May 13th. No information, but I feel the need, the need for speed. I have not seen that movie, by the way, folks. I've heard about it. I had the video game, and I know of the theme song, and I know of Take My Breath Away and Danger Zone and Tom Cruise. Other than that, I don't know anything else about the movie. Tulip Day, observed annually on May 13th. No information. World Cocktail Day, observed annually on May 13th. No information. World FM Day. World FM Day, also known as World Facilities Management Day. Observed Wednesday of the second full week in May, and there's no information there. And that's the end of the video. I'm Lawrence Ross. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Hey, guys, it's Lawrence. Well, that's the end of the video. But before I go, I want to thank you guys for checking out the content. If you'd like, you can check out my radio show every Friday evening at 7 p.m. on razradiolive.com. That's R-A-S, radiolive.com, radiochaos.net. And in this case, it's chaos with a K, K-A-O-S, radiochaos.net, or nonamenetwork.net. It's called the LRWS, and check it out. We also have a store, teespring.com, T-E-E, spring.com, forward slash stores, forward slash LRWS. And if you want, you can check out my Patreon page, patreon.com, forward slash LRoss1987. Thanks for watching.